In this video, we're going to talk about the absolute worst ways to market your music online. Some of these things will do nothing for you. Other ones can get you blocked and other ones can just ruin your reputation. So let's just dive right into it. Number one, it's probably the most obvious, but that's why it's first, it's using any kind of bots. So there's this kind of myth roaming around or at least perpetuated by the companies that sell these bot services that if you use these bots and stack up your numbers and services like Instagram, Spotify, Facebook, whatever, uh, that you're going to get the social proof and that people are going to be more likely to, to follow you. And also they'll say that, you know, the algorithm will take notice of you for having so many people and so much activity that it'll share your stuff. Maybe this was true like 10 years ago, but now it's, it's completely false. And honestly, the only thing that you're going to do with this is get your account blocked. So easiest, easiest thing, don't use any bot services. Be very skeptical of anything you use online. If, they, if it says organic in it, it's probably not organic. <laughs> So the second worst way to market music is automation services. And a lot of people seem to think that these are a lot better than using bots because it's not like fake people following your accounts. It's using automation services to take a lot of actions really quickly to get real people to, to follow you back. And people use this on Instagram, typically just Instagram, but there, there are other services that it will apply as well. And the way it works is they'll, they'll use these bots to uh, take control of your account. They'll go around and they'll randomly like thousands or tens of thousands of posts per day. They might follow thousands of people and then unfollow them right away or wait until they follow you and then unfollow you. Basically, they'll do all these things to get your, you to show up in those people's notifications feeds. And then, you know, the idea is that a certain small percentage of them will follow you back or they might check out your content to see why you're randomly engaging on their post with, with their like son or something. <laughs> and the thing these automation services will say is very similar to what the bot services say. Oh, you're gonna get all these people coming to you, it's gonna trigger the algorithm and it's gonna get you more exposure. And it's really not the case. And, and you can kind of think about why this is problematic, right? If you're doing the like thing, you're, it's just you'll type in some keywords like hashtag uh, hip hop music, and then it'll just go and like every single <laughs> post in the hip hop music uh, category and then like think of what types of things that it might be liking for you some of these things will even leave comments on these serv on these uh, on these services and it's like you can imagine from a branding perspective that just looks horrible for you you might be leaving these absolutely idiotic out of place comments all over the internet you might be liking these posts you actually don't like and you might have all these people that are just kind of like what are you doing like why are you following me and unfollowing you why did you say this on my post and it's really not gonna help you. The people that follow you from that thing are not the type of people you want. They're not gonna really like your music. They just saw you do something on Instagram and they're like, oh, well, I guess I'll follow them back. So it's not really gonna help you out. And by the way, just to add something else to this, there are some services that they won't like or comment or follow and unfollow. What they'll actually do is they'll go around and watch like a ton of people's stories, like 10,000 stories a day, because you can see who watched your stories on Instagram. So the, the idea of that is the same. If you watch 100,000 stories a day and 1% of those people follow you back, you'll gain you know, 1,000 people a day. And uh, it's bad for the same reasons. The people that are going to see you in that are not the type of people that may even like your music. They're essentially pity following you. <laughs> so the third worst way to market music is spam. And this category is a little more specific than the first two, which are more obviously bad. This one, there's some nuance to it. So when I say spam, and you've, you've probably seen these comments all over Instagram and, and Facebook and YouTube, uh, people leave a comment saying, hey, great content, please check out my profile. I'm a music producer and I, I would love some streams of my music or, or whatever it is. You, you've, you've all seen the comments. This type of thing is bad because you're, you're essentially looking for people to pity you and check out your stuff. And it just does not work. In fact, anytime I see it in my content, I either I definitely delete the post and often I'll block them. Uh, and it just everyone who sees it is just like kind of cringing at that person doing it. Now, there's a lot of different levels of this. It could also be like blindly DMing people saying, hey, check out my song, blindly emailing people, hey, check out my song, going on SoundCloud and messaging people, hey, check out my song. It's all spam. It's all unwanted. It's not filtering by what types of people are likely to check you out. So it's not actually helpful to you in any way. Now, there is an actual good strategy that involves like commenting on stuff online. Um, but that's randomly spamming stuff is not it. If you actually want to get people from like some kind of social activity you can do yourself that will um, actually get you some benefit is like go online and just engage in specific groups and communities and look at certain hashtags and like leave genuine comments like talking about the content people are doing. Don't even mention your stuff. Like just someone, I don't know, they're, they're, they're at a show and they record a video of the thing live. Be like, oh, cool. I really like that band. Like, when was this? 
someone's doing some cool thing on like an Ableton push or a cool guitar thing, comment like, oh, well, like I, I really like that. What kind of amp did you use? Like be genuine. Don't just use the, the generic things. Like find posts that you actually like and you have something to say in a comment and interact with them. Just make sure it's targeted in your niche in some way, like in places where people who like your music, one, people who like your music are likely to be, and two, people who make your music are likely to be. Because one hand, that's how you can make connections. And then in terms of the people that also make your music, and then also you'll be talking to people who may actually just be listeners in those areas as well. So spam, bad, but actually being a real human on social media, good. That's the difference. So number four, I've talked about before and I'll link right here to a video that I did way back. Um, and this is playlist promotion services. Playlist promotion services are typically just scams. You know, and the way these companies operate is they'll say, hey, give us like $300 and we'll put you on 100,000 followers worth of playlists. So for example, if a playlist has 10,000 followers on Spotify uh, and you know you paid for a 100,000 follower package, they'll put you on 10, 10,000 follower playlists. Now, <laughs> the, the problem with this is a lot of these playlists are botted. Two, even if they're not, a lot of them aren't actually, they don't, they don't have much listeners on a regular basis. They're kind of just dead playlists. Uh, and then three, playlists don't really help you that much in general. Like when people listen to a playlist, they're not clicking on the individual artist and following them. They're not saving the song to the library. They're not adding that song to their own playlist. And they might only come to that playlist once because they were randomly looking for a playlist with their friends, you know, new future based music. And then they listen to that playlist that one time and bail. You know, or they save it to the library and then never listen to it again. It depends. There's various levels of these, these, uh, there's various levels of playlists, but in general, these playlist promotion companies are typically the worst because they're charging you a relatively high price for something that's inherently just completely worthless. Now, <laughs> there, there are different ways that playlist services can work. And for example, I've talked about SubmitHub on this channel. I'll, I'll link to a video here. Um, I actually did two, one where I interviewed the founder of SubmitHub and then another one where I talk about the best ways to use SubmitHub. The nice thing about SubmitHub is you're pitching to individual playlists, like individual curators at least. You're not just giving someone money and they put you on whatever playlist they have. You're looking up a curator, looking at what they like, looking at what playlist they have and pitching to them. And you can even say, hey, I really like this playlist. I think my song fits well between these slots. You can, you can get to that level. And that's an example of a good playlist service. Now, another bad playlist service, or I guess a middle ground, would be Playlist Push. Playlist Push is a lot more legit than, I'm not gonna name the horrible ones because I don't wanna shame any company, but a generic playlist pitching service where you just give money and they place you. Playlist Push will give your, they're not promising you anything. They're still pitching your music to a bunch of people in a genre and those individual curators will rate your music and whoever wants to pick up the song will take it. They get paid their fee whether they accept your song or not. And a lot of people think that's bad. Why would you pay, f like, wouldn't I rather pay for guaranteed placement versus not guaranteed placement? And the answer is no, because there's a certain standard of quality that's there. The reason why those generic playlist companies are so bad is because they typically will take anything. And so they, you'll be in this playlist with a bunch of horrible music, maybe not horrible music, that's being a little harsh, but you can imagine the quality is higher on, on things for like Submit Hub or Playlist Push in those playlists. Now, the reason why I like SubmitHub better than Playlist Push is because Playlist Push charges three to four times per more than what SubmitHub charges per curator. And I know because I'm a curator on both SubmitHub and Playlist Push. I have Spotify playlists and I'm curating on those sites, although nowadays I don't have time to do too much of it. But they pay way more on Playlist Push and I do the exact same thing on both services. So if you're gonna pitch to one, do SubmitHub because on Playlist Push, they randomly, they don't randomly, but they assign you to curators by genre. And on SubmitHub, you can individually pick what curators you want to pitch to. And there's probably other services. There's MusoSoup, that works differently, and that's more for getting blogs. And that's another reason why SubmitHub is cool, is because when I use it nowadays, I'm mostly just pitching to blogs and um, YouTube channels and stuff. Like, I can promote my music with Facebook ads to get stuff on Spotify and Apple Music. I can't run Facebook ads to get a blog placement. <laughs> so number five, another horrible way to market music is follow for follow. And this, again, follows a lot of forms. There's, for example, oh, check out my music on Spotify and I'll check out your music on Spotify. Uh, follow me on Spotify, I'll follow you on Spotify. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'll subscribe to your YouTube channel. And these, this applies not just, a lot of these things don't just apply for music, as you might've noticed. They're, these are in every single like type of online creator sphere because it's, you know they, they're preying 
on the hopes and dreams of people who want to build something for themselves. Um, and so that's why there's so much of this stuff. But follow for follow is pretty much bad in all cases, because you can imagine if you're a hip hop, uh, let's say producer, and then there's another hip hop producer and you listen to each other's music, how the hell does that help you, right? And the, the theory that some people will say is, oh, well, if we each get a lot, if we get a community and we start following each other's stuff, the algorithms are gonna pick up on that. But the problem with that thinking is that algorithms aren't this like stupid thing where it says, hey, people like, like some people like this. Okay, let's just show it to more people. It looks at the specific type of human who likes that. So if any kind of algorithmic activity were to happen, it would just be showing your music to other hip hop producers, which typically is not what you want. You probably want like music listener fans. You don't just want a community of just producers. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, but you can imagine that's not really what you're going for if you're trying to make it as an artist. And this can take, you know, it can be one-on-one -on -one with people. It can be a Facebook group where everyone just likes each other's stuff. It can be uh, texting circles or DM circles. There's just a lot of names for them. Or it can be something on Hyped It. They have the download gate uh, trading network or whatever. Basically, you can go on there. You can do someone's download gate. So you follow them on Spotify, give them your email address, and you get a credit where you can pitch your thing for another person to down do your download gate. And I don't fault Hyped It for having that there. <laughs> um, and I've talked to John Gold and he's a, he's a great guy. Um, but I just want to point that out that I wouldn't really recommend using the, the download gate trading service. It's basically another form of follow for follow. And it's really not going to, to help you music wise, unless your target audience is music creators. And so in that case, I'd say if you're a company that makes sample packs or you make plugins or you sell courses to music producers, you should go on these services and do follow for follow because you're going to be targeting musicians, right? If you're trying to find actual music fans, none of these services are actually going to help you. So anyways, if you want to learn some actual ways to market music, including my favorite way, which is Facebook ads, you can check out this playlist here. I also have another playlist down here, which is more generic, which, which has some free marketing methods thrown about across it. And if you want to see any of this stuff covered in more detail or other specific ways about how best to market music for free, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll add that to my uh, list of videos as well in the future. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.